What's the truth behind vinyl records? Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> John in Bucharest, Romania writes to me and he says, Hey Paul, because of the tons of snake oil out there, I would ask you, how much is accurate from the following text regarding vinyl records and how the music is stored, edited, recorded, and reissued? And the text reads, Analog music is the ultimate listening format for audio lovers. Unlike digital recordings, analog audio captures the entire sound wave with no information loss or digital sound compression. There is no digital conversion or coloration. The result is a more accurate reproduction of what was originally recorded. Well, <laughs> I just love it when people write stuff like that. It's not snake oil, but it's also not accurate because it is just, it's too sweeping. You, you, first off, I mean, I could pick apart almost anything in there. Digital does not compress, okay? There is no compression in digital unless the engineer decides to add it. So, first off, digital does not compress. Second off, vinyl does not capture everything, nor does analog. There's a lot of missing information. Dynamic range. Analog, traditional analog is dynamically challenged, shall we say. A typical tape recorder, maybe you're going to get 70 dB of dynamic range out of it, where the, the, even a CD has 100. 96. So let's not confuse the facts of technology with our conclusions that one is so much better than the other because as soon as you do that, you get into trouble. You get people like me who have an engineering background and say, that's just horse patootie. That, that is not accurate. It is not true. And therefore, we throw out the entire statement, which is a mistake. Because the truth is so much depends on the actual piece, the recorded piece. I'll give you some examples. High resolution audio, whether you believe it or not, sounds better than standard resolution CD, okay? Tit for tat, if you take a 1644 recording that was originally made at, at 16 bits, 44.1 kilohertz sample rate, and at the same time, with the same microphones and the same everything, you also made a 192.24, and you made a DSD, version. You got all three recorders going from the same feed, handled the same way. If you sit in our mastering studios at Octave Records and you listen to that, you don't have to have golden ears to hear the difference. I, I don't care what uh, uh, oh, Mark Waldrop um, has to say about that because in many cases Mark is correct that upsampled makes no difference whatsoever. Simply raising the sample rate doesn't help the sound. But done properly, it does. Now, where was I going with that? Okay. I can also make the claim that I have a number of 441 Red Book CDs that sound far better than two-thirds of the high-resolution recordings that I have. Do I then suggest that CD is better or the same as high-resolution audio? No. That's silly. That is silly. We have this great VPI turntable and our stellar phono stage. Excellent piece. Excellent piece. I've got some records in here that will just blow your socks off. Just, I mean, like, and, and the CD version of it sucks. Does that mean CDs suck? Nope. Does that mean vinyl's better? Nope. What it means 
is this particular recording, this particular master, played on this particular system, outperforms the others that are not identical. We're not comparing apples to apples or oranges to oranges, and that's the problem. So no, this cannot be said and accepted as one giant sweeping proclamation because there are so many variables that have to be taken into account. So many instances where I can show you exactly the opposite. I just think we need to be careful with our words and not jump to conclusions like that because it's not snake oil. This is all good stuff and it depends on the mastering, the recording, blah, blah, woof, woof. <laughs> all right. Enough soapbox. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you.